Why do some parents choose to homeschool? Well, I'm Nicolene Peck. I'm a homeschool parent. I also starred on a program called The World's Strictest Parents. And in this reaction video, we're gonna be looking at what homeschool looked like at my house, and I'm gonna be discussing with you why some parents choose to homeschool like I did. So why do some parents choose to homeschool? It's becoming more and more popular. In fact, post COVID, there are even more people homeschooling now than there ever were before. And I think it's because some people realized there's a beauty to it. Now there's multiple different reasons that people choose to homeschool and no family is probably exactly the same. Some people choose to homeschool just because they want to feel a certain closeness to their children. They want to be there for those educational ahas and have a little bit more time as a family. That was certainly a factor for my family. I wanted closeness and I felt like sending them away for the whole day just was a lot of time that we didn't get to have developing family bonds. Instead, they would be developing bonds with people outside of the family more than inside of the family. That doesn't mean they didn't have friends though. We had a huge homeschool community that our children were always engaged in. We did homeschool plays, homeschool choirs, homeschool debate league, it fill in the blank. We had it all. And so they definitely had friends that were homeschooled and friends that were not homeschooled, but their family relationships gave them their very best friends. And that was certainly one of the things I was going toward. Many people also homeschool because of their moral beliefs and they want to make sure that all of the education matches the morals that they hold dear. So that's a big thing. Many homeschoolers will bring religion and their ideology into the education. There is already some morals and ideology that are in any person's education because you can't detach a professor's morals and ideologies from the words that they're gonna share with their pupils. The difference at a homeschool is that you know exactly what the morals and ideology are, where at other schools you may not actually know what the professor believes or thinks Thinks about certain topics that might come up in class. Other reasons that people choose to homeschool are because maybe their children are academically advanced. That was certainly one of the reasons that we also chose to homeschool. My oldest two children learned to read by the time they were three, and they were really, really proficient reading at adult levels by the time they were five. I knew this was going to be a big problem sending them to school. Now that doesn't mean you have to have somebody who's way ahead to choose to homeschool for academic academic reasons. My other two children, London and Porter, were both dyslexic. They wanted to start reading at age three, but both of them didn't actually master reading until they were much, much older than what you would normally consider traditional learning for young children. So some were a little behind, some were a little ahead. In the end, they all got what they needed. No one thought they were stupid. And we were able to make sure that academically they had the most individualized track possible. Those are just a few reasons that some people choose to homeschool. That's a collection of the reasons that our family chose to homeschool. We loved the social aspect because family became the number one social influence. We loved the moral aspect Aspect because we could bring morality in. And we also loved the academic aspect. Probably the other thing that I would share is that they internalized it. In this reaction video, as we look at James and Hannah, who came to stay in my house for eight days for the filming of the reality TV program, The World's Strictest Parents, we see their reaction to homeschool. And they don't necessarily have a favorable reaction. It's really different than what they're used to. A homeschool family does a lot of learning together, even if people are at different levels of learning. And this is something that they definitely were not used to. But over time, they actually changed their tune as well. So let's take a look at this video and see what they think about homeschooling at our house. Nicolene believes that home educating her children helps to protect them from the temptations of the playground. The reason that I homeschool is because I want them to do good in the world and to know what good means. I don't want them confused by somebody else's priorities in life. 
Okay, so that bit is really important. And that's another reason that I chose to homeschool. I felt like, isn't every person supposed to make a good impact on the world? Now, I'm not saying a person going to any other type of school can't make a good impact. They can. But I felt like I wanted my children to really know what goodness was. What did a good environment feel like? And later on, when hard times come, if they knew what good felt like, a good home life felt like, then wouldn't they protect that? Isn't that why people go to war is to protect the good, the virtuous, to protect their families? I wanted my children to see themselves as those who would bring goodness to the world and protect the goodness that was in the world, which meant they had to experience it firsthand. So that was another, a little bit deeper reason for why I chose to homeschool. Hannah and James are required to join the daily study sessions. James has other ideas. Today, I've decided to get some time. A real one. Is it that right? Oh, God. Boys. Hey, James, come here, please. Oh, man. Today is Quentin's 13th birthday. <laughs> Okay, so what we're seeing here is James does not want to do homeschool. He didn't even want to give it a chance. <laughs> and this is funny because at the end of the whole program, we had private conversations and he was like, you know, actually, I think it's kind of cool. I misjudged it, you know, he really did. So I said, we're going to do homeschooling today. And he was like, what? Now we have to remember James had dropped out of school. He wasn't succeeding at school. He had kind of low self-confidence about school. I don't think he wanted his school skills to be shown on camera. He also really felt like it was babyish. That was his big thing. He's like, I'm not a baby. I'm not a 10 year old. And he felt like learning along with other children that were younger than him would actually mean that he was being babied instead of being in an educational environment. But if he actually really listened into the conversation, which some of it he did not participate in, if he really listened into the conversation, he would see that even though my children were a few years younger than him, they actually had a pretty good understanding of the world and who they were. And we discussed some pretty adult things as well. So in this next section here that we're going to finish watching, what I'm doing is I'm telling everyone, hey, it's my son's birthday and he's turning 13. What do you wish that you knew or that what advice would you give to yourself at that age if you could do it all over again? So this made Hannah really do some thinking. And since it's his 13th birthday, I thought that we would do something that revolved a little bit around the age 13. Okay. Mm. Hannah was expelled from school age 13 when she was just two years older than Paige. When I was 13, I was just drinking like every night of the week and just going with loads of boys and because I was drunk, I was kissing them and that. Mm -hmm. Are you going to save yourself to manage? Mm -hmm. You're not going to kiss no one? How are you supposed to find out there's a problem for you then if you don't kiss them? I'm fine. You don't, you don't need you to don't kiss need them. You don't need to. You need to explore them. No, you don't. Mm -mm. You find out what their morals are and how they live their lifestyle. The Pecks have taught their children to stand up for what they believe in. Okay, so we see that Hannah divulges, you know, when I was 13, I was kicked out of school. I was drinking, doing drugs, messing around with boys. She told us at another, a later time, that actually by the time she was 14, she was trying to get pregnant so that she could get benefits from the government. Because that's a thing. As long as you're 14 years old, if you get pregnant, then the government will give you money. Maybe you could move out and you'll be able to pay for a lot of things on your own. So she actually didn't know another way to get to know boys. And I thought that was kind of sad, actually. I think my children thought that was unusual and sad as well. I remember having talks with my children after this and them expressing, Mom, Hannah doesn't know how to get to know other things about a person, like about boys, except for just partying and sex and just what feels good in the minute. And I said, yeah, I'm glad you noticed that. You know, it was interesting if you could see her paper, they don't show it here, but on her paper, she wrote herself, hey, don't do this. Don't sleep around. 
don't drop out of school. She wrote herself some good advice based on the conversation that she had right there with Quinn and Paige. And you see Quinn is a little bit, he's like not really looking at her and he's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's feeling a little embarrassed that, that they're having that conversation about sleeping around with boys because he kind of can't believe at that minute that she is saying, well, how else do you get to know people? And I love that Paige says, you know, you, you look at their morals, you look at their personality, and it goes on from there. They discussed for quite some time, and Hannah decided that at that moment, she really did not want her daughter, Tanisha, to make her same mistakes. She didn't want her to start sleeping around at age 13. She wanted her to have a different kind of a life. And this was a big deal, because in the UK, even some parents are encouraging their children to sleep around when they're young and not watching out for creating good, healthy relationships. So anyway, this was a big game changer for her, even though it seems like a very small moment in the day. Before I move on to the next clip that we're gonna look at, if you have any comments about homeschooling, leave them below. I know many people know others who've homeschooled. Some are more successful than others, just like some public schoolers are more successful than others, but it's kind of fun to hear your stories, especially if you're a homeschooler. What were your experiences? Write them in the chat below. Let's go ahead and look at this next clip. We see James and he's in the garden. That's what he calls it, the garden. We call it the yard. And he is determined he's going to get a suntan because he is out in the mountain west of the United States and we get a lot of sun and a lot of big open sky. And so he wants to capitalize on that. And that's what he wanted to do today instead of doing school. So let's see what London and Porter, who at this stage of the game, are like six and or maybe seven and five. I think they were seven and five at this stage. So kind of young, but they're seeing what he's doing and the camera crew decides to take a peek at some of their thoughts. The packs have taught their children to stand up for what they believe in. That's bad. It's bad because you're showing special parts of your body that God doesn't James has been struggling with his education for some time. I didn't really do that good at school because I didn't concentrate enough in year 11. Year 11 is a year I lacked in <laughs> and started smoking more weed. <laughs> it made my grades go fail because I used to get my exams buzzing. He passed enough GCSEs to get into college, but has little chance of graduating. I don't know how often he attends college, to be honest, but it's not regular. Things are not looking good and he's looking to be kicked out if he doesn't pull his socks up. Okay, so we see there little London and Porter saying, that's bad, that's not very good because he's showing his special body that God gave him. So that's one of the ways that I explained to my little children why we had a modesty standard. I just explained that there were certain parts of our body we didn't show and we didn't go outside without shirts on. And so when they saw him laying out there without his shirt on, they were like, oh, we don't do that. That's not a good choice. And here's why. And London was, you know, even having a little conversation with Porter there about it, which was super cute. But, you know, James really was dealing with a lot. And I'm glad that they added a little bit of his backstory right here because he was struggling with school and in danger of being kicked out. And he had been smoking for a long time. He had been engaged in a lot of drugs and partying and some really risky behavior in a lot of ways. And so he was going in a direction that was not going to really turn out to be beneficial for him. And his mom knew it, but she didn't know how to stop it. And I think he knew it too. I think he kept seeing himself be oppositional and defiant and not towing the line. She says, pull his socks up, you know, cause that's kind of more of a British term, but he wasn't pulling his socks up. He wasn't doing the things that he was supposed to do. And I think he knew it. And he actually was being mean to himself on the inside because of that. He and I had a lot of great talks. And I'll tell you what, James is smart. He was one smart guy. And I'm really glad that we had those opportunities to plan for his life and to prepare for his future. So as far as homeschooling goes, there were some huge moments in homeschooling that you don't see here in this video, 
But we had conversations about where James was going to go with his life. And he decided in our home, because of a book we read together that week as part of homeschooling called The Dream Giver, he decided that he had a dream to become a designer. And I taught him how to sew his first thing. I taught him how to sew. He made a skirt for his mother. And he and I made a plan for what he needed to accomplish that dream. I get a little emotional about it, but he did it. He did it. He went home and he went back to school and he pulled his socks up like his mom said and he started doing everything he needed to do. He changed. He got out of all the drug life and he made a total shift. He even, I remember him sending me emails saying, you know, I'm going to stop smoking. He'd been smoking since he was eight years old and he decided I'm not doing that anymore. I can't even breathe when I go running. I got to stop this. He changed everything. It really was inspiring for me and our family to see what he had done just with that short bit of time to focus on who he was becoming. And he now works in the designing field just like he wanted to. He went to university and went into all the design programs and he became who he wanted to become in that eight days of homeschooling. So 180 there, didn't want to homeschool, thought it was babyish. In the end, we did do some learning together. We discussed, which is the beautiful thing of homeschooling anyway. And he ended up changing the whole course of his life and becoming more productive because he had that time with a family for an entire week. And homeschool is just part of our family culture. It's just a way we live. It's not something that we do from nine to three every day. If you've enjoyed this reaction video, I hope you'll find other reaction videos that we have. I hope you'll leave me a comment and give me a thumbs up so that we know you like these kinds of videos and we can make more of them. But if you've loved this video, then I know you're going to enjoy the next video, which is how to teach kids to respect their parents. Click that video now. We'll see you there.